And coach, uh, so far this season, USC's thrown the third most passes in FBS, and you're just throwing it at a higher rate than you usually have in the past. Just in general, what's responsible for that? Uh, I think a little bit of the way that the, the games have, have unfolded. Um, you know, we've been in, I think we, you know, we have been in a lot of two minute situations, which, you know, typically is going to accentuate that a little bit. Um, and yeah, I don't, we don't, pay a ton of attention to it from a from an overall perspective to me it's still a, a week-to-week thing and what you think gives you the best chance to win and and that's you know why we call the plays that we do ryan karchi hey lincoln obviously dan talked a little bit about the the pass rush and just trying to continue to get that going i know he's taking some creative routes to to make that work you know blitzing uh, out of the secondary a little bit more often i, I wonder how you thought he's kind of handled those adjustments uh, to just kind of get the the sacks and more pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's done a good job with it. I mean, it's you've got you've got the pieces that you have, um, and you know, each year, especially in a you know a, a year one for us with this new defense and new defensive staff, um, you, you have the players that we have, and you've got to go you, you've got to go make it work with what you have, and and try to accentuate the things that we do well. Um, and then try to, um, I don't know if cover up's the right word, but you got to try to create with what you have. And so I think his, his creativity has shown. Um, and, and obviously that's going to continue to evolve as we continue to recruit, as we continue to develop, um, to target guys uh, that, that obviously fit this system and give us the skill sets that we want to have uh, with the way that we play. Um, and, and that's just, that'll continue to evolve as time goes on, but no, he's, I mean, he's he's creative, and we've had to be we've had to be even just creative within just within the year, just because of the, some of the differing lineups and having guys available, not having guys available. We've played obviously some some very different offensive styles, and uh, so no, I do I, I do I, you feel his creativity week to week, and he he stays really positive with it, um, very positive, very confident. It's all about. It's all about just find a way, all right. And if, if this isn't working or if this is different, then let's let's adjust and and do everything we can to put these guys in position to succeed and to stop offenses. Luca, hey Lincoln, uh, just going off that, you know, is it kind of going to be a, a priority of of this program? You think to to sort of try and develop a little bit more talent, you know, on on off the edge in terms of the pass rush, that sort of thing. Is that going to kind of be an emphasis, you know, in, in the future with with what you talked about trying to develop that talent there? Yeah, I, I think it's definitely fair to say. Um, I think that's that's definitely one thing that we as we we look ahead that we've got to be able to we have to be able to generate more pass rush without having to bring you know pressure all the time and, and we certainly want to get to that point um and I think you know there's there's the there's the now which is obviously how can we you know develop and get that going uh, as much as we possibly can for the rest of this season and then certainly there's a big picture view of uh recruiting uh, developing uh getting getting to the point where we feel like we can get pressure a lot of different ways and then you know you want to get to the point where as a as a coordinator, you feel like you got a chance to get pressure either way, and now you're just mixing up looks fit with the confidence that we can be effective um, either way. So, no, definitely the development and recruiting of, of pass rushers is is going to be a it's certainly going to be a big part part of of looking forward. Shotgun. Hey Lincoln, what impact are injuries having on this team right now, and maybe what you can do as a coaching staff? Oh, they always do. You know, it's, it's, you just, you have to adjust week to week. I mean, you, you get, occasionally you get the rare seasons where it feels like your lineup stays, you know, the same the whole way through and you're able to develop a lot of continuity and build, but, you know, that happens some years and it doesn't some years. It has, it hasn't really happened for us and, and that's okay. Uh, you got to be able to adjust. You got to be able to adapt. You know, you got to be able to show, the resiliency of the team and, and the adaptability of the team and the coaching staff. So you just never know, you know, challenges are coming. You just don't, you can't ever predict what all they're going to be and you got to be ready to handle them. So yeah, it's an, it's an impact. Sure. You'd love to go through it and have minimal injuries and, and very consistent lineups. And that's, that's definitely an advantage, but it, that's obviously not, not in our control. And what is in our control is, 
is finding a way to, to put a good product out there each week and finding a way to use different skill sets and adapt. And like, it's okay if we, if, if we got to adapt, we're trying to obviously minimize that for the guys um, and, and, you know, try to try to take a situation which can be inconsistent and try to provide as much consistency to them as we possibly can, if that makes sense. And so um got to put more of the strain on the staff than the players has been the, has been the mindset with it. So um, it's had an impact, but it's football. It's adversity happens. We got to keep responding. Connor. Do you have any update on the statuses of the guys in the secondary, Jacoby Covington, Kamari Ramsey, Jalen Smith, do you expect to have any of them on Friday? We're, we're hopeful. Um, we're hopeful. They, they've all, uh, they've all shown some, some positive signs. Um, it's the, the short week is, you know, the short week is a challenge there. That's probably one of the, the big negatives to the short week is when you have a couple of guys that, that get dinged up, it's obviously just a little bit less time. Um, not, and then not necessarily just to get healthy, but then there's also just the, the preparation standpoint, right? It's like not just get them healthy. So they physically could do it on, a Friday night, but do you feel like that you can get them ready to get some reps in the week to be ready to play? Um, and they're, and so that, those are the two things that we're fighting against. Hopeful to have them. Um, our, our medical staff has done a nice job with those guys. They've all three made progress, but I don't know that, um, you know, t- today will be, today will probably be pretty telling for those guys. Luca. Thinking, uh, what's what's in general kind of your your philosophy as a you know head coach, uh, an offensive guy on on the value of having you know a kind of a clearly defined number one or number two you know receiver in general, and and when you look at kind of this group of of sophomore guys that USC has, do you hope that you know eventually one or two kind of establish themselves as as kind of a clear top target, or what what's your general kind of philosophy around that? It's. I, I... I definitely understand the question. It, it's it's kind of hard to force because every every receiving core is different. Um, and you know, I've had, I've had years where we kind of have a like a really clear cut, like one or two that that are like they're just kind of way ahead of everybody else. And you're you're those are just going to be guys you know you're going to feature every week, no matter what. Um, and then we've had years, you know, more. You know, I would say similar kind of now where we feel like we've got a handful of guys that, that are number ones and, 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 you know, each one of them is having different opportunities. They're all making impacts in all the games, but, you know, one game, this guy gets a little more, this game, this guy gets a little bit more. So um, I think the key is just that we're getting, that we're getting productivity, you know, from all of these guys and whether a bunch comes from one or two players or it's more evenly spread out, you know, across you know, four or five players, let's say, I mean, I, I think you're more, it's tougher to defend option B, um, but it's harder to obviously build the core to, to where you feel like you can go, you know, target all these guys and you got confidence built up in all of them. And we do have confidence in a lot of these right now. And I do think that has made us difficult to defend in the passing game and, and certainly counting on, you know, that showing up even more as these guys get more experience as our quarterbacks get more experience with them, certainly counting on that showing up. Uh, at its at its very best here in the in the last part of the season. Thank you, mm-hmm. Ryan Karchi. Hey, like, and I know late kickoffs were really a Pac-12 thing. It, it seemed like for a while, and now you guys are playing an 8 p.m. game on on a Friday uh, after a long trip. I, I guess I just wonder when you first were made aware that USC was moving to the Big Ten, thinking about kickoff times and and the schedule. Has this kind of has this matched what you thought it would be? Has it been different, harder, easier? I think I think it's been pretty as I would expect. I mean, I I, I really the, the Friday kicks here aren't ideal in LA um, because that's and I know there's a lot of other you know great sporting events going on on Friday, um, but th- those are those obviously provide some challenges in LA that are unique to to our place, um, and so. Those are the ones I'm really not a not a fan of, but I, we're not going to have too many of those. That's probably going to be a once every two year type of thing. Um, so, then I think all the the early kicks have been have been great. I do. I think it's been we've played. I mean, you look at some of the the TV windows that we've played in, um, and and they, when we have had to travel, we haven't got home just just you know horribly late. Um, you know, I think it's the recovery piece has been good for our guys. So, no, I think scheduling, um, I, 
this was this one was a little unique. We kind of knew it in the beginning, like, all right, you go to Maryland, you come back and play a Friday game. Um, but I, you know, now that we're going through it, I really don't have any complaints about it other than that I just don't love Friday games here at USC for for some of the obvious reasons. Um, but I, I think the scheduling in large part this year has been a, a, a success and a positive in my mind for our program. We're going to wrap up with these last two. Jude? Hey, Coach. Um, I'm just curious, kind of what has been your impression so far of Danton Lynn through kind of the you know first half of the season? And how do you think he's just kind of handled, you know, not the true consistency of, you know, all his starters out there every single week? He's just been he's been steady, man. He's he's handled it like, uh, you know, I think he's handled like a pro. And I really our whole defensive staff has. I mean, I think uh, you just tell these guys, you know, don't get real rattled by not having a player or this happening or that happening, you can tell they've been there, you know, it just, it just feels that way. Um, and, and I, I think, you know, they've all been great additions to our program. And, and I just think there's been a real steadiness about, you know, that entire room, um, the way that those guys work together, those, the way those guys, you know, function with our players and with the rest of our staff. And, 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 and I, I feel that, I, f I feel that with our entire staff. I mean, we're, a it's a, this is a very steady staff, um, it's a, a lot of people that have been there. It's a lot of people that don't get easily rattled that, that, that see the big picture and just kind of stay at it. And there's a real professionalism in this building right now. So no, I've been, I've been proud of how he's handled it. All of our people, um, you know, he, he's been, you know, a tremendous addition. He's, he's been, you know, I, I, I can't say enough good things about him. And we'll wrap it up with shotgun. Hey, Lincoln, if you'll indulge me, i got a couple of, of random special teams questions uh, that I've wondered for a little while. But why do, does one of the offense, the reserve offensive linemen wear the number 95, the pullover jersey, uh, when there's not a duplicate number anywhere? Um, and then also, why do the offensive guards on a on the kick unit flip sides? Um, well, there's two parts to that. The, the jersey one, uh, there's definitely a schematic piece to that that I don't, that okay. I definitely gotcha. don't want to get into, but I promise you there's a good reason behind it to go to that trouble. I promise you. Um, and then, yeah, flipping sides on that for us is about teaching people's blocks come differently from, from kick side versus boundary side. And it's, it's kind of the thought process is, all right, do you want to teach one guy to do both? Um, or do you want to, you know, teach them just kind of one thing. And so, it's uh it's it's fairly common in field goals. I mean, offenses used to do it all the time. Like offenses used to, you know, flip O lineman and you know to like play side and backside all all the time. Obviously, you don't see it as much anymore, but that's that's been the thought process there.